Hello everybody and welcome to this video where my hair is tragic at the moment but um, in continuing my series of movies that I've made I wanted to go over the next feature I did which is called OC Babes and the Slasher of Zombie Town. Now this movie is really bad it's really fun and i had a good time making it but this is one of those situations where like against all odds i shot a film now this was the first movie of mine that got picked up by a distributor it was released in i want to say 2009 it was released in 2009 and it was available everywhere and it was also on a lot of streaming services like um through your cable company and shit like that i'm trying to remember where else it was it was released in china as bar cry and i don't think that was a legit version i think it was like a company that bootlegs films because i don't ever remember getting anything from that um in fact i never got anything from this movie at all the company it was with didn't pay us and then i can't remember if they went out of business or if they got bought or liquidated or something um not too long after that um the streaming industry killed a lot of dvd distribution companies just like walmart killed a lot of companies in the 10 years prior but that's besides the point you're not here to find out about that stuff you're here to find out about how the fuck i made a movie it was 2007 because i made frankenstein in 2006 at the very end of 2006 and then moved back from Oregon to California, Southern California. Um, I can't remember if we were back for Christmas. No, we weren't. So it was like um, January or February of 2007 when we moved back. And... For some reason, I can't remember the timeline. Oh, because I had done some shorts, and then I did a web series. And then... But um, since today is Friday the 13th, I wanted to talk about this, because that kind of plays into it. What ended up happening was, I was having a screening of Frankenstein in my house. And I think this was when... I belonged to this. It was my club, but there was like a, um, a movie club that I put together called, because um, I was in Orange County at the time, and it was called the OC Horror Horrors. So stupid. Uh, <laughs> we had a MySpace page and everything. And once a week, I would have a bunch of people come over and I would show them whatever movie I wanted them to watch kind of thing. For some reason, this night was for Frankenstein. And, like, my Frankenstein movie. And, like all things that happen when you are making movies, almost everything happens by accident. Okay? Like, you can never plan this shit. Things just fall into place. One of the people who were at the screening was a person who I knew through a bartending gig I had at the time. And she had just gotten in that morning from Australia. She went to Australia for a vacation and then came that night to watch the movie. After the movie was over, I was outside having a cigarette and she came up to me and she's like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, and she's like, I was thinking about it on the flight home that I really want to make a movie because there is a huge market that isn't being tapped into. And I'm like, okay, what is it? And this was after the OC 
already came and went. Like, that show was fucking dead as dubstep, you know what I'm saying? She's like, in Australia, people still watch the OC and they love it. And stores sell OC merch, the whole thing. Like, the whole OC thing is, like, really popular in Australia. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, so I want to make a movie about the OC. And I'm like, well, first off, don't call it that because that sounds stupid. Like, when you're just talking to me. Like, don't say that. But, okay, that's cool. And she's like, how much does it cost to make a movie? And I'm like, I'm like, it fucking totally depends on what you're trying to do and what you want to do. Um, I'm like, right now, I want to make a slasher movie because I grew up loving slasher movies. And Friday the 13th was, like, my favorite fucking thing in the world. And Jason Voorhees was, like, my Frankenstein, you know? Like, I fucking loved him. I thought he was cool as shit. And I was just reading Crystal Lake Memories, I think is what it's called. For some reason, I have, like, four copies of this book. It's a giant fucking book, and I... I just have multiple copies of this book. So she was like, okay, well, I want to do, like, a zombie movie. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, why don't we do a zombie movie that's also a slasher movie? Is is that something we can do? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, can you, like, write that? Like, do you have, like... And I'm like, yeah, I could get, you know, whatever. So we, we do all this shit, and then, like, I don't think anything of it. I'm just like, oh... Somebody wants to make a movie. I'll, like, look into this. And she was so excited. And the next day, she hits me up. And she's like, what's going on with the movie? I want to I want to read the script. And I'm like, oh, I'm on it. I'm going to finish it today and send it to you. So I um, wrote this fucking movie. Like, seriously, in, like, maybe two days. Like, um, yeah. It, like... And because we were at this thing, everyone who was there, we we were talking about it afterwards, like at the screen in my movie, everyone who was there, I'm like, do you want to be in the movie? Do you want to be in the movie? And I was trying to get everybody involved. And all these people are like, yeah, totally, fuck yeah. So then I'm like, okay, like, you guys are going to be in the movie, you guys are going to be in the movie. And I started like trying to write parts for all these people. And... So the, t- the title is O.C. Babes and the Slasher is Zombie Town. Oh, that was the thing. Because she said she wanted it to be called O.C. Babes. Like, she's like, I think that's really cool. Like, I think people would dig that in Australia. And it's funny, too. Because I'm assuming that some of you who actually are watching this and live in Australia are going to be horribly fucking offended that, like, this was, like, a fucking thing. But, it like, all ideas come out of fucking weird fucking shit. And then I came up with a tagline. It was something like, the zombies of Orange County are being eaten by zombies in Orange County. Or something like that. Like, it was kind of stupid, but, like, it was kind of a cool idea. Um, so going back to what worked when I made Frankenstein was, I'm like, okay, I just need to find a place that has like one location. I I need to write something about that. And so I was asking all the people who were there. One of the people who was there, like was friends with this guy that owned a bar. And she's like, I bet I could get him to let you shoot in this bar. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, let me know how much that's going to cost and all this other shit. And I was working at a bar at the time, but I knew they wouldn't let me shoot in there. But I knew I could shoot, like, the outside of the bar, maybe something really quick inside if I didn't bring any lights and, like, all that other shit. And it was just, like, a simple kind of thing. Because of something that happened that I might do another video on, I was in touch with a producer who I was working with on something different that never ended up happening. And she put a casting call together. And um, next thing I know, there are like 40 fucking people in my house um, showing up to audition for this thing. Basically, I felt so bad that all these people had to come to my house that I tried to make sure there were parts for every person who showed up. Like, just total participation trophies I'm giving out everywhere. So, this whole thing started a 
a bunch of relationships for me. So, like, Alyssa Dowling, um, this is where I met her the first time. And I ended up working with her probably more than any other actress. Like, I think she's been in, like, 12 or 13 of my movies. Um, and then there were some other people who were there. Uh, Julie Rose had been in a couple of my movies. Uh, Noelle Balfour had been in a couple of my movies. Um, this one chick, uh, Christine... Fuck, I can't remember her last name off the top of my head all of a sudden. She ended up, she wasn't really an actress, but after doing this movie, ended up being a producer, um, an executive producer on another one of my movies. And then there were like a lot of people who, because they were in the movie, introduced me to other people who ended up being like really influential in a lot of the stuff that I did. So regardless of how shit this movie is, if I hadn't made this movie a lot of stuff would not have happened for me. So you always got to look at that, that every single thing you do is an opportunity. We were trying to figure out how much this movie was going to cost. The chick who was putting the money up for it, like she was able to pull together. She like, it was so funny. Cause like, I'm thinking like, cause I told her all these different numbers and shit and she's like, okay, so when are we going to do this? I'm like, well, we can do it whenever you feel like doing it, you know? Um, and she's like, all right, okay, um, I have like $1,000, so can we do this for $1,000? And I was just like, are you f fucking joking me? Like, I wrote the script, I did the casting, I got all these people involved, and, like, your job was to show up with the money. This was your idea in the first place, and all you could fucking come up with is 1000 bucks." So then we talked about um, different ways to like for her to raise money or bring in other investors and shit like that. So she found somebody who I want to say matched what she put in, um, but I'm not sure exactly. Basically, this movie was made for like twenty five hundred bucks, like, and that's being generous, okay. Um, and because I didn't have all the connections yet, a lot of the stuff I had to pay for would be something that I wouldn't have to pay for later. So, for instance, like, um, I rented a camera. I rented sound equipment. I rented a editing suite. And it wasn't like an editing suite like you would think. Like, this company came and brought a big-ass table like this, a big plastic table, and brought a Macintosh computer, a uh, hard drive, that, and everything had like Final Cut on it and um, all this shit. And I had that for eight days. So I had to edit the whole movie in eight days. Which was terrifying. Because even though I was involved in the editing of the Frankenstein movie, I didn't actually do the editing. I was just watching what the dude was doing. So... In editing this movie, I had to, like, try to remember everything I saw Aaron, the guy who edited Frankenstein, everything he did. And so, um, and the funny thing was, when <laughs> we were editing Frankenstein, I wasn't watching him going, oh, I need to see what he's doing so on my next feature I could, like, copy everything that he did. I was just, like, in the room, like, giving him, like, ideas of what to do and everything like that. So, anyway, so we had, like, no money and a huge cast and all this other shit. And I realized that if we were going to do this, we had to shoot it in a day. Because we couldn't afford to pay the actors an extra day. We couldn't afford the location for another day. So, I'm like, okay, so we are going to shoot this movie in, like, eight hours. No joke. Okay, this is how this fucking went down. So that morning, I get the camera, um, I put the camera on my shoulder, and I just start driving around town, go down to the beach, drive around, holding this big-ass stupid camera while I'm driving the car. And that was going to be the POV of the killer, like looking for victims and all this shit. Well, we were supposed to be able to get into the bar at like 10 o'clock for some fucking reason. And I'm like, really? Like, they're going to let us in like oh, during business hours? Like, that's weird. And then um, the producer was handling this bit. And then that day, um, I asked her to like 
get whatever last minute shit we needed from the location. She goes to the location, comes back, and she's like, um, we actually can't go in there until 2.30 in the morning because that's after they close and after the cleaning people come in and clean up. And I was like, holy shit. And everyone was showing up at my house at 8.30. That's not true because it was daylight outside. Fuck me, dude. So it was like daylight outside and we were trying to figure all this out. So people were going over scenes and all this shit. This is another mistake I made. I never went to the bar before shooting. I just saw pictures of the bar. So everything that I wanted to do was like in my head planned. And then when I got there, a lot of the stuff I wanted to do, I couldn't do. But basically what ended up happening was at the bar, no, 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 at my house, there were a bunch of scenes that were supposed to be shot either at the bar or outside the bar or at the beach or whatever. But because of time constraints and all this shit, I changed all of it to be shot in different rooms in my house and out front of my house and shit like that. I don't know. There's a scene with a couple of the chicks in bed. There's a scene of these dudes who are hitting on chicks. And then I turned it into, it's a porn audition. And these people are having to act out the scene as if the scene they're acting was a scene that was going to be in the porno, but it was actually a scene from my script but I had to change it. Oh, and I ended up being a off-camera character, so you could hear my voice. I was the director. Um, Dick Fister was my name in that. And um, so there was that. There was um, a couple other things that uh, I just had to change at the last minute. So we get to the bar, did a couple shots outside, but we didn't have permits, so I had to do that quick and get everybody inside. And then once we were inside, we locked the door and we're like, okay, so everyone's in here now. Let's do this. And so the idea of the story is that there's all these people at a bar and one of the people inside the bar with them is this serial killer who's been killing people in the town for like the last couple of weeks. But obviously no one in the bar knows this, but they're locked in the bar because there's a zombie outbreak that just happened. And so there's zombies everywhere. Well, I didn't have zombies everywhere. I had enough um, money and whatever to have, like, um, I think we had five or six people, like, zombies, like, in zombie makeup and the whole fucking thing. Every time I went outside to shoot them, it just, it looked like crap. It looked like a kid's movie. I don't know. So... I noticed that the bar had security cameras. So um, I just filmed the security camera TV of them outside. And that actually made it look like there was more of them. And it made it look a little... Uh, I don't know. I liked the way that came out. So that was fine. Another thing that happened was... Um, there was this one dude who ended up being in a bunch of my other movies who was supposed to be in this movie, and for some reason couldn't show up. Like, I can't remember what happened. But there were all of... He was like a secondary character, but his presence was important for something else that would happen later. And he couldn't be there. And so I'm like, okay, well, I don't even have an extra person for this. So... I had to like divvy up his stuff with other people and all this shit. Um, there was this chick who was going to be a um, naked chick in a hockey mask that just kind of hung out that one of the dudes in the group was high and he kept seeing this naked chick in a hockey mask and like it was supposed to like start giving him clues of who the real killer was or whatever. The chick who was the naked chick in the hockey mask um, was not an actress. She was just some chick I knew who wanted to get naked. And she was in like two or three scenes. And then I guess the guy from the bar who was still there um, started making her feel really uncomfortable and saying shit to her and like doing all this shit. So she's like, I just don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to go. And so that whole part of the movie got cut just little things like this one chick was supposed to get stabbed 
through the um, s- side of the thing of a stall door in the bathroom. When we got into the bathroom, either the knife wouldn't fit or um, I can't remember what the problem was. But however I wanted to do it, we couldn't do it. And so the rig we had made wasn't going to work. So I had somebody working on how to fix that while I did other shit. And then all the effects, all the tricks, it was all camera tricks. So it was like somebody like goes to throw a knife and then the camera pans over. And when the camera gets to where the knife lands, like it's someone like going like, oh, with like a knife already stuck in his head kind of thing. So like everything, all the special effects was shit like that. I told the... And that was another thing that was hard because, like, we're shooting in the middle of the night. So it's, like, maybe 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, the whole fucking thing. And I'm needing all these people, like, the people who got killed off at the beginning of the movie. Because I shot, like, in order. Because we were in one room and I needed all the bodies to stay put. But a lot of people were getting pissed off and they didn't want to fucking stay laying on the ground in blood you know, for the rest of the fucking night. And I'm like, you know what? Just fucking do it. Oh, and that was the other thing. The guy who was supposed to shoot the movie um, flaked because he thought that the movie was going to be a crap production, which he was right about, but he shouldn't have took the fucking job and then quit at the last minute. So I had to operate the camera. And here's the thing. I had never used this camera before. Like, yeah, I put it on my shoulder and drove it around town But, like, half of that shit's out of focus, and it's all fucked up. And then we had these, like, huge fucking lights that the fucking DP ordered to for the shoot that, like, we didn't need at all because the bar was small as shit. So, like, we would turn these lights on, and, like, the place lit up like a goddamn fucking... It was just ridiculous. So the movies really washed out. A lot of it's, like, soft focus. Um... The sound isn't as bad as I expected it to be. The chick who was doing sound was pretty good. But then she, like, disappeared, like, afterwards. Like, that's a whole other story. Anyway, long story short, at the end of the movie, like, the the final girl and the slasher are supposed to have this big fight through the bar. And I told them, I'm like, okay, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to watch Friday the 13th and, like basically scene by scene of the final fight scene that lasts fucking forever. I want you guys to redo that fight. Okay. And, um, I remember the week before the shoot, like, um, one of them calling me and telling me that like they'd been working on it and acting it out and they like choreographed it to the movie and all this other shit. And they were doing all this stuff. And I don't know if it was just because of how tired everybody was, But so, like, I'm like, okay, action, do the fight. They just, like, go at each other's throats and start choking each other and get on the floor and just start rolling. Like, choking each other, rolling. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And, I mean, they did some other shit, but, like, it was like, like, why did you guys rehearse this if you were just going to start strangling each other kind of thing? And so I was trying to do all this stuff with the camera, get in real close, come out, do all this shit to try to make it look like the fight was doing something more than it was. And it wasn't. So whatever. And then um, we wrapped. Okay. And I'm trying to edit this fucking movie together. I um, had this like shitty keyboard. I did a bunch of music for it. Um, I tried to make trailers for it that were based on, like, commercials that were popular and, like, late night ads and shit like that. So that was kind of funny. Um, but the thing was, was that the movie was too short. Like, um, I wasn't not only getting enough coverage, but I wasn't getting a lot of, um, like, before the shots and tail after the shot and all this other stuff. It was just, like, quick cuts and shit. So I would like three days into editing, I'm like, this movie's gonna be like like fifty four minutes. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Like, I, I don't know what to do. Cause we did have to cut a lot of stuff that we couldn't do or whatever. And I didn't have the camera anymore. I had to send that back because I couldn't afford to pay for it for another day. So what I ended up doing was taking a page out of Frankenstein, which was um 
find a public domain movie and use a bunch of footage from that to pad out the movie and to continue the stuff and to see if there was any way I could take something that I was trying to do in the movie but didn't get a chance to do and then do it with that. So, like, um, I took Night of the Living Dead, the George Romero movie, which pissed a lot of people off that I did this. Um, for, like, a half a second, then nobody gave a shit. But, like, so, little things. So, all the zombie stuff, like, trying to get into the bar and everything, I just used, like, the zombies from that, other than the security camera footage I had. Um, like, there's this part where, like, they try to use the phone... And so, like, I cut to the part from Night of the Living Dead where they try to use the phone and the phone's dead and all this other shit. Um, just little things like that. And then at the end of the movie, I use, like, the end of Night of the Living Dead, like, with the news footage and all that stuff, talking about everything. And so then the movie ended up being, like, 74 minutes. Um, and one of the reviews was, like, this movie's so crap, it's, like, five minutes of their movie and then, like, the entire movie at Night of the Living Dead, which totally is not accurate whatsoever at all. But anyway, it was just a fun, ridiculous um, movie. And, um, like, the people who worked on it got paid for it. Um, but, like, we never made any money from it. But I was never going to send it out to distributors because I thought it was awful. And the producer is like, look, I'm going to fucking sue you if you don't send that movie out. So I send the fucking movie out thinking no one will fucking take it. And um, the first place I sent it to made an offer for it. So go figure. Then it took forever for the movie to come out. So I, I just, I had no idea that anyone would take the movie and they took the movie or they sent the contracts over, and so I gave the contracts to the producer. I'm like, look, this is what they're offering. So if you want to do this, let's do this. If not, then I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, I could keep sending it out to other places and see what happens. Um, but we ended up taking the deal, and um, I think it took like nine months or something because I had already made like another ten movies before that movie even came out. Um, and that probably hurt my cred a little bit. But there were screenings of OC Babes, so like people saw it and like knew what was going to happen and shit like that. So, um, yeah. So that was OC Babes and the Slasher of Zombie Town, my first slasher movie. Me trying to make my Friday the 13th homage. But yeah, so just like whatever job you get, whatever project you're putting together, like realize that all the people that are there with you might be somebody you're working with in the future. So try to cultivate those relationships and try to figure out how to make those special and how to make them work. Okay. So anyway, um, that's that. Um, I don't know if you've got any questions about how to make a movie in eight hours, leave them down below, <laughs> type your scripts hard, and um, I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.